Uh, okay, uh, I think that our uh, s section uh, automatically switched to English, uh, and probably uh, it will be okay if uh, I'll continue in English. So, uh, uh, today we talk a lot about the heterogeneity of neuroblastoma, and uh, uh, for the decades we know that uh, the, uh, the main reasons of this heterogeneity of neuroblastoma is genomic, uh, let's say a copy number variation mostly, and uh, expressional profile, which uh, allow to, uh, to very nice separation of uh, different subgroups of neuroblastoma with unequal, uh, unequal clinical course, both uh, basing on uh, segmental chromosomal aberrations or uh, expressional uh, profiling. And uh, the topic I would like to start is uh, uh, exp uh, expressional uh, inequalities. And the project uh, we started together with the University of uh, Cologne, uh, uh, when we uh, tried to, to, uh, to uh, validate and to find out uh, the inequalities between uh, low, uh, mostly low and intermediate risk uh, patients on the expression level. We started with a pilot group and uh, firstly tried to, uh, to see the uh, 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 e equals in bioinformatics uh, comparison and uh, almost uh, created uh, in home bioinformatic pipeline which uh, very well fits with the pipeline which used in Cologne and in Heidelberg and uh, uh, we got almost 100% uh, concordance. But, uh, later when, uh, but later when we switched to the uh, clustering analysis and subgroup analysis, unfortunately we were not able to uh, confirm this data on our cohort of patients, despite the nice con concordance on the bioinformatics level, which, uh, in which uh, uh, samples were considered favorable or unfavorable. Unfortunately, on, on, the, uh, on our cohort, on the uh, 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 clinical data, we did not see uh, uh, such nice differences. So we uh, uh, would like to uh, to find out what's uh, wh what's wrong with this, and we uh, enlarge uh, our cohort with uh, other uh, uh, bio cohort from uh, Yekaterinburg from other clinic, uh, and uh, we use uh, um, another platform which is more cheap but allow to uh, analyze gene expression profiling and to make uh, uh, similar clustering. Uh, using this, uh, another cohort, uh, we get uh, more nice uh, clustering, but also no uh, differences in uh, survival rates. So we were a little bit disappointed, but after that we uh, applied for the literature data and saw that many groups uh, create their own in-home based uh, expression of classifiers, uh, uh, German, Japanese, uh, American, and so on. And it, it, it looked like uh, a molecular meta-analysis where uh, there were, uh, we were able to select several genes which are present in several uh, classifiers and to find out if these genes will predict outcome. And in silica, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, work was done and uh, uh, it was shown that this uh, 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 split uh, classifier nicely predicts outcome. And uh, also, uh, they were created several predictors for uh, different uh, groups. For example, uh, 18 genes uh, were enough for prediction of uh, survival in high risk patients. So, and uh, we uh, asked for. <laughs> Sound a little bit <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, we, we were surprised as well. Uh, absolutely. So, um, uh, so, and uh, similar to to medulloblastoma, uh, we uh, try to find out uh, how much genes do we need to uh, clear separation of uh, subgroups of uh, uh, patients with unequal outcome. For example. For uh, uh, medulloblastoma, it's enough uh, to uh, see expression of 22 genes, uh, 
And uh, we use a uh, nanostring technique because the many samples uh, in our center are uh, from uh, formerly fixed paraffin embedded tissue, and this technique uh, works uh, quite good on this kind of material. So uh, we created this. Uh, uh, customized panel and uh, which uh, contain 42 genes which were uh, present in different uh, classifiers and uh, we saw that uh, there was some distribution but not uh, almost binary distribution and we saw several clusters and this main uh, binary uh, division uh, was slightly correlated by these genes with uh, clinical risk groups, but uh, not correlated with real outcome. But these uh, more tiny uh, uh, gen gene sets were uh, very nicely cor uh, correlated with outcome. And uh, uh, we saw these differentially expressed genes both on the uh, entire cohort of patients, uh, also in low and intermediate risk groups. Here you can see this. Uh, genes which were associated with unfavorable uh, events and uh, oppositely this were correlated with a favorable outcome and uh, the same on the high uh, risk patients. And finally, uh, when we uh, uh, put uh, put it together, uh, genes that were different, differentially expressed in uh, patients with a good outcome and a bad outcome, we saw so-called favorable genes and unfavorable genes, and after that we perform uh, CAG mapping, and most favorable genes devote, uh, devote, belong to uh, different metabolic pathways and uh, pathways of uh, uh, neuronal uh, cell maturation but uh, many of unfavorable genes f uh, fall to uh, pathways related to cancer. And uh, when we uh, used only uh, data of unfavorable gene expression uh, like this and favorable gene expression, uh, uh, we got a nice uh, separation on, uh, on the uh, event-free survival of the patient. Uh, second, uh, which is also closely related to the previous talk, is uh, uh, tort expression. And uh, uh, Sandra very uh, nicely uh, demonstrated this uh, mechanistical class uh, classification of neuroblastoma and data that uh, also uh, was in previous talk, that uh, high tort expression is uh, uh, correlated with unfavorable outcome and uh, the survival of these patients uh, did not differ from the mechan amplified, amplified uh, cases. And uh, this is the slide from Hanekan and Weinberg uh, demonstrating the uh, activation of TERT directly by MIC or MIC. Uh, also, uh, uh, we uh, try to find out uh, any uh, um, differences of uh, uh, something beyond the protein coding genes and focused on uh, microRNA 128A. Uh, almost it was occasional, but uh, uh, this marker came uh, from uh, the uh, study in onchohematology, where, uh, and I need to say that in onchohematology, it was not really interesting and significant. And uh, we uh, uh, saw that uh, BMI is one of uh, uh, many targets of uh, microRNA 128A, which, uh, which is uh, generally it's uh, oncosuppressor microRNA, and uh, uh, BMI is uh, an activator of uh, telomerase. Uh, also, uh, uh, this uh, coding sequence of uh, microRNA 128A is uh, co-localized with. Uh, uh, specific antagonist of third uh, zip2 gene and uh, uh, we performed uh, rock uh, uh, analysis to find out the uh, correlation uh, and uh, the level of correlation between third expression and uh, event free survival and uh, microRNA expression together with event free survival and we saw that uh, on this uh, 
uh, with this threshold level, uh, high threat expression correlates with uh, infer uh, inferior event free survival, and oppositely, uh, lack of uh, micro RNA 120A expression uh, correlates also with uh, unfavorable outcome. Uh, finally, we saw uh, that. Uh, a combination of uh, uh, upregulation of TURD and uh, downregulation of uh, uh, microRNA 1288 uh, uh, respectively above and below the uh, uh, indicated threshold levels, uh, is correlated with inferior uh, event-free survival and uh, really do not, uh, differ, does not differ from the uh, MECAN amplified cases. Uh, survival rates for uh, patients harboring uh, something, uh, one uh, expression abnormality is, uh, abnormality is either uh, high threat expression or uh, down regulation of uh, microRNA 128 had uh, intermediate survival. And for example, this uh, group third uh, was significantly uh, heterogeneous and uh, standard cytogenetic aberrations such as 17Q gain or 1P deletion uh, gained uh, additional prognostic significance in this group. And uh, finally, uh, the most favorable group of patients uh, uh, those who uh, retained uh, microRNA 28A expression and had no uh, abundant TERT expression, and this patient had excellent outcome, and the only uh, two patients had 14Q uh, deletion, and uh, both of these children had events. So finally, something uh, from uh, physics from school. So if we have an uh, electric circuit with uh, either MECAN activation and uh, subsequent TERT activation or uh, down regulation of uh, microRNA 128A, we have a, a big current and uh, bright light. Uh, in the intermediate situation, either uh, TERT up regulation or uh, microRNA uh, down regulation is associated uh, with the intermediate survival, so so-called intermediate uh, current in the circuit, and uh, the absence uh, of uh, voltage in the uh, 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 MIC and uh, absent third, uh, absent and uh, retained microRNA 28 expression, and the same with the cumulative incidence of uh, progression, the same situation. So, uh, uh, first, uh, firstly, uh, we'd like to validate this uh, data uh, by independent technique. And when we use a uh, nanostring uh, panel for uh, 780, uh, 98 uh, microRNAs, we confirmed the uh, groups with uh, uh, retained uh, uh, microRNA 128A expression and uh, absent expression, and uh, more we saw that uh, patients with uh, high or retained uh, microRNA 28A expression had significant, uh, significant differences in expression of many others microRNA with a significant upregulation of many of them. Uh, also, we try to find out are uh, these uh, cases with uh, uh, retained or uh, deficient for microRNA 128A expression are really different or not. And uh, when we perform expression analysis, we saw that uh, there are uh, some signatures which are so associated with downregulation and upregulation of uh, this microRNA. And uh, we saw three. Uh, differentially expressed genes, was, one is a cell, and uh, interestingly that uh, this uh, finding um, forwards us to very uh, quite old uh, publication from Japan that uh, in uh, 203 this group demonstrated that a cell, uh, higher cell expression is associated with good prognosis in neurobal stomachs. And uh, also we find that uh, in this gr in group of um, uh, in group of down, uh, uh, down regulation of uh, microRNA 128A expression, uh, two genes, uh, 
uh, oh, oh, sorry, oppositely, uh, on uh, patients with uh, uh, that's left for uh, 100 uh, microRNA expression, uh, the uh, down regulation of uh, these two genes in the one is uh, cancer testis antigen, which, which is related to uh, immune response of tumor. And uh, it's logic to, uh, to switch to, to the uh, onchoimmunology, to immune response of tumor, and to say about our uh, results in this field. And first, uh, which is, uh, we can mention um, regarding immunology and neuroblastoma is uh, Apsoclonus myoclonus syndrome, which is um, immunologically um, based uh, paranaplastic uh, syndrome. And uh, comparing this, uh, uh, these cases uh, for uh, for gene uh, uh, expression uh, panel uh, related for uh, oncoimmunology for immune uh, pathways in cancer, we saw that uh, uh, these tumors uh, uh, differ uh, differ significantly for uh, genes uh, involved in regulation of uh, uh, in, in general regulation of uh, Im immune response uh, for tumors, and especially in uh, subsets of T cell and B cell function. Uh, also, it was interesting for us to find out uh, uh, there are, are there any differences in uh, immunological regulation of uh, high-risk tumors, and in the pilot uh, group we saw some differences in MECAN amplified and single copy uh, patients, but when we enlarged our cohort we saw that uh, there were no uh, difference in, differences in uh, uh, immune infiltrating cells and uh, immune response between MECAN positive and negative cases, but uh, nevertheless we saw a special subgroup of patients where uh, many of uh, genes uh, that were included in the panel were upregulated and uh, this, uh, this uh, genes were included in many uh, cell functions devoted to uh, immune response to cancer. So uh, for now we are uh, trying to find out uh, are there uh, any biological basis and clinical relevance of this uh, data. Uh, and and uh, finally, some uh, some genomic data. I will not speak about mutations and the sequencing. I will focus on very uh, uh, some uh, interesting, I think, points from uh, copy number changes. Uh, for now, we uh, combine three techniques for uh, for these investigations: uh, uh, CGH, uh, MLP, and. Fish and uh, sometimes see uh, quite interesting things. For example, uh, uh, this very, very tiny uh, deletion, which uh, includes only one gene, MLL or KMT. Uh, 2A is still uh, one, 11 key deletion, despite uh, it's uh, really small. And uh, also interesting case, when on the fish level we saw the amplification of this locus, which is real, um, we were really surprised, which is absolutely not common uh, for neuroblastoma, where uh, 11 q locus is deleted. Uh, but when we use more uh, high throughput techniques, such as MLPA, we saw that uh, amplification of this particular gene uh, is, uh, is present on the background of the uh, 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 deletion of. Um, entire uh, 11 Q arm and uh, uh, associated with rearrangement of this region, which is logic and uh, known to, uh, to be present in neuroblastoma. So, and finally, uh, I, I would like to, uh, to show this uh, quite uh, old slide that uh, the uh, a profile of copy number variations could be changed and during the uh, evolution of tumor when uh, uh, when relapse uh, appears, and uh, the, the number of this uh, copy number changes uh, could predict secondary event free survival. Uh, so, if uh, cells in relapse harbor more uh, copy number changes, 
this predicts uh, a favorable outcome comparing to those cases where uh, we observe stable uh, uh, copy number profile or even lack of original uh, uh, number of copy number changes. So I would like to uh, to thank uh, all collaborators and uh, charity foundations for the support of this work, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Are there any questions? If not, I have one. The gene signature uh, that you eventually described with the, the different genes at the gene ontology analysis you did, did you by any chance compare it to other gene signatures? Uh, not yet. Because uh, most of them are MIG targets, so this would suggest there is something that has to do with MIG in there. Yes, it, it could be, and uh, 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 we are now uh, uh, in, uh, in the uh, mathematical and bioinformatic uh, processing of this data. So, and uh, this uh, several uh, differential express genes uh, uh, get this information ju uh, just prior to the conference. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, may I ask you a question? Sure. I'm, I'm sure you know, but I don't. Uh, uh, did exome studies uh, bring something new for neuroblastoma? Yes, uh, and uh, it was a, a previous talk uh, from, uh, oh, from, uh, from... I, I was making another talk in another audience, yeah, sorry. Uh, no problem, I, I'll explain you in brief. So, uh, uh, so... Uh, just in the end of uh, previous year, it was a, a, a paper published from uh, the Cologne group and the first of the uh, Sander, and uh, they demonstrated that uh, there are two main uh, uh, reasons for uh, unfavorable neuroblastoma. One is uh, activation of uh, telomerase uh, yeah. uh, with uh, mm, uh, uh, activation of telomerase or alternative, alternative uh, maintenance of telomeres, and the second is uh, activating mutations in uh, RAS pathway or in activating mutations in uh, p53 pathway. So combining. But, 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 but this was known before, I believe, no? No, uh, it's uh, it's uh, really uh, new data. Yes, new, really relevant data. So uh, and uh, interesting that uh, the mutations uh, itself did not predict outcome uh, so good as in combination with the data on uh, telomeres, because uh, for example there are some uh, uh, favorable uh, cases which harbor. Uh, activating mutations, for example, in the RAS pathway, but uh, uh, it demonstrates spontaneous regression or something like that. So uh, if uh, it's interesting for you, you can ask the, the author of this uh, paper. Uh, but, 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 but look, I mean, uh, uh, you have a knee amplification, you have uh, mutation profiles, which could be prognostic, you have a few expression profiles, which could be prognostic. How you navigate in this? Because uh, this is a, a, a this this is a rare tumor. It is very difficult to make meaningful predictor because uh, when you come to the patient, you have multitude of parameters, and given that the tumor is rare, it is difficult to imagine how this will translate to some at least clinical trials when you stratify patients uh, for good prognosis and bad prognosis. How, how to do what is more important? Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. uh, sure, and uh, maybe I'll continue. So, Sandra, you can, you can use this mic. Is, is this working? Yes. So maybe I can just add the comment, and I think you also pointed this out in your presentation. I know that it is not um, very inviting if we say you need to do five analysis in the clinic just uh, at diagnosis. So um, that's, uh, that's why I added this point. If you start to look at telomerase activation. And I mean, you can also start with just third expression level. This is just one RT-PCR at diagnosis, just one PCR. You have a very good correlation with telomerase activation, so you don't need to check the enzyme activity with the trap assay. You, you can just, at diagnosis, if you start just checking the, telo, uh, the third expression level, you have a very good correlation. You can clearly identify many high-risk patients. That's why I pointed out that 
telomerase activation alone is a very strong marker in our cohort and I showed this uh, multivariate analysis that this um, is better than the common clinical risk markers and I think you also included some slides where you just take a look at third expression level. This is the first point. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, maybe one comment for this. Uh, 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 in the paper uh, Sandra mentioned, it's uh, uh, pre uh, uh, there is an uh, overview that uh, this uh, telomerase maintenance combined with uh, this uh, mutation profile in very uh, selected genes, uh, at least 17 genes, is correlated with uh, uh, previously known uh, um, classifiers such as cytogenetic classifier, expressional classifier. So uh, probably it could be the, uh, the entire classifier which could uh, include many uh, previous uh, generated data and, uh, and uh, uh, the explanation of uh, these inequalities in expressional profiling, in uh, cytogenetic profiling could be uh, uh, done by, uh, uh, by classification by TERT and uh, uh, let, let me put discussion in another dimension. Imagine that you are now a principal clinical investigator. How you would design molecular driven trial? You have everything. You have patients, some access, you know access, uh, you know frequency of this disease. You have everything. Uh, what trial would, would you design based on this data? Because I mean, for uh, obviously, if you know some patients have good prognosis, some patients have bad prognosis, uh, it has to be translated to some action, otherwise. We are planning such a trial, and we, uh, we are planning to include the analysis that we published in science last year. So we will do all of the analysis, but I understand that not every single lab and every single hospital can do all of these analysis. That's why I pointed out this, uh, that the third expression level is right. But we will include MCN amplification, third re rearrangements, third expression level, AOT, so these are the four analyses that we will include for telomere maintenance and we will do a panel sequencing for the 17 genes. So this is five analyses, which is basic research, uh, or, or coming from basic research. This is, our, uh, that is uh, what we're planning for the clinical trial, for the prospective study. But if I understand you correctly, there will be no expression profiling. So you, you, you make a few simple tests, relatively simple, this and clear cut tests. This is just expression for, third, for the third expression yeah, 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 but which is the other genes, no expression. So this is just the mutations for, for the... No, expression. no expression no. classifiers. No. The the, uh, expression hmm? classifier is a different but Yeah, yeah I see. The expression classifiers are being used for the low and intermediate risk groups and not for the high risk. So the German Dutch study will include the classifiers as has been uh, have been published, uh, but this is not for the high risk patients. For the high risk patients, it will be what Sandra said. Because what I know from uh, adult tumors. Uh, all adult tumors uh, have been subjected to expression classifier analysis dozens of times. Only one classifier is translated. This is for breast cancer, which is extremely frequent as compared to other tumor types. And even more importantly, this classifier is actually used without adjustment to clinical parameters. So basically, if you just uh, consider clinical parameters. Added value is not clear, and uh, this is uh, 20 years of work for, for the frequent tumor type. This is a different study. This is a different uh, clinical study. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention, and I think we can take a break now for 10 minutes.